everyone. Welcome to Insights, a platform that helps you to understand more about postgraduate programs we offer at UTM. You're with me, Nurfara Athira, for the next hour to look at today's program entitled PhD and Master of Education Tassel, Get Educated to Educate. Uh, these courses are offered at Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities, UTMKL. Uh, hi to all of the audience on Facebook and YouTube. Um, or Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities, uh, please like and share this program, yeah? So uh, many speakers will be joining us today. We have Dr. Noor Hasmiza, the coordinator of postgraduate programs for TESOL, Hadi currently doing his PhD with us, and two lovely ladies, Azlina and Amira. Both are our um, at TESOL students. So while chatting with our panels, we will also give short quizzes to audiences out there. So stay tuned, yeah? Uh, let's call them in, shall we? So first we have Dr. Noor Hasmiza Abu Hassan Sazali, also known as Dr. Normi. Hi, Dr. Normi. Hi, Tia. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. I'm good. All right. Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry? We are working on Sunday today. Yes, we are. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'd like to ask you uh, the first question, yeah? So, Emmet Tassel, um, who, who should be joining this program and how much uh, does it cost? Thank you, Tia. Uh, okay, uh, for Emmet Tassel or Emmet uh, or Master of Education in teaching of, teaching of English as a Second Language is actually a course for anyone especially teachers, English language teachers, who hope to enhance their teaching skills in uh, TESOL, okay? Uh, and actually for those who like to pursue their career in teaching, especially for mm -hmm. English teaching. And most importantly, uh, this course is not just meant for English language teachers. Our current students also have backgrounds in engineering. So if you are interested to become an English language teacher, if you, are, if, if you plan to pursue a career, you know, like a tutor or anyone who like to uh, master English language, um, uh, sorry, uh, TESOL, uh, this course is actually for you, actually. Oh, so, so it's for, for everyone. Yeah, it's actually for everyone. But of course, there are some um, uh, requirements that they have to fulfill, actually. Yes. Okay? And uh, talking about the um, uh, fee just now for locals is uh, we 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 feel that our students can actually finish the course within one and a half years. That mm -hmm. means within three years. The, the the fastest is three years. So for mm -hmm. three years, sorry, for three semesters, not three years. You only do this for one and a half year actually. Sorry, yeah. yeah. So for three semesters. It's just about 10,660 ringgit. 10,660, actually. 10,660, yeah, ringgit. 10,660 for three semesters for local students and for international students, it's um, it's about uh, 26,500 ringgit, actually. That is actually for mixed mode and top course. But we also have uh, full research uh, students who can actually do do this master tester so mm -hmm. for full research students it's slightly cheaper it's nine five uh six oh for three semesters for local students and two five four zero zero for international students for further information uh you can actually check uh admission at upm.my actually so that is where you can find the um table for the fees yeah admission at yes all right so um, another question for you, um, if someone, if one does not have a degree in TESOL, just like you mentioned just now, can he or she still do uh, the MET TESOL? So just now you mentioned that there are other, other students of other fields, not just for English field. So can you um, explain on the requirement, specific requirement for the program, please? Sure, okay. So to pursue your MET TESOL, the requirement is to have bachelor degree in TESOL or English language studies. But for those who do not have bachelor degree in TESOL, you need to have IELTS 7.0 or MUET Band 5 for locals with CGPA 3.0 and above. And that's for local students. And for international students, the, the English requirement is TOEFL 600 
or IL 7.0 or CFR uh, C1 actually. Okay, okay. So, so IELTS is basically 7.0, yeah, for both um, international and also local students. Yeah. If All right. We do not have any, uh, especially for the local students, right? If you do mm -hmm. not have any bachelor degree in TESOL, so it mm -hmm. is required that you need to have IELTS 7.0 or MUET Ben 5. Ben 5. All right. Okay, I see. And for international students, for the, is it TOEFL that you mentioned just now? Yes. Yes, TOEFL. 600 or IELTS 7.0 or CFR uh, C1. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, so to all of the uh, audience on Facebook and YouTube, uh, you are now on Insights PhD and Emmet Tassel program. Okay, get educated to educate. So feel free to type your questions to Dr. Nomi in the comment box should you have any, yeah? Okay, so let's go to our next question. So uh, I believe Emmet Tassel has three modes, yeah? Taught course, mixed mode, and full research. Okay, so what are the differences between them? So, and which is the easiest to score? I know you want to score, right? Yeah. So, okay. Um, so, Emmet Tessel has three modes, like what I mentioned just now. First is top course, second mm -hmm. is mixed mode, and the, the third one is full research. Top course, you have seven subjects for top courses, uh, sorry, for top course. Mixed mode, you have seven. seven. Uh, top, uh, top course, this one has 11, sorry. Top course, mm -hmm. 11 subjects, mixed mode, 7 subjects, and full research, mm -hmm. only 2. Okay? So, mm -hmm. basically, if you were to join top course uh, class, uh, you have more classes. It means more uh, more commitment in from you, actually. Like you mm -hmm. mentioned just now, which one is the easiest? I cannot say that this is the easiest <laughs> and this is the most yeah. difficult one. It, mm -hmm. uh, it goes to the commitment on uh, from you, actually. If, yeah. you, if you are willing to spend more time of your days to attend the class, then definitely you need to have more commitment from you, right? Yes. Uh, but usually from my observation, uh, at Matt Tessel uh, in KL is quite, is quite popular among those who are working. So mm -hmm. if you are working, I would suggest you take mixed mode because if you were to take mixed mode, you have lesser classes. So you attend the class and then you and then you put the you you focus on your research at least as compared mm -hmm. to those who are doing uh talk course but this does not mean that uh for those who are taking mixed mode there's no chance for you to improve on your skills mm -hmm. as a coordinator and, and and as a utm lecturer we always uh, try our best to give extra courses you know workshops you know like half day workshop uh, to expose you to skills that you like to, to have actually you know because some some people might say oh i'm taking mixed mode but i want to take more classes but i can't because you know uh, of my work yeah. so we, we, we try to find our ways so that we can actually give you extra uh classes uh like like workshops you know mm -hmm. uh, UK is very popular with that actually yes <laughs> like, oh, yeah it's all online and it's it's yeah. all up to you to choose actually yeah okay so um being the coordinator yourself uh, you also handle phd tassel program yes so what are the areas of research that students can embark on if they do phd tassel okay uh if you actually go to our website humanities.utm.my slash kl you will see the list of uh, kl lecturers okay who are and their expertise and their experts uh Basically, if you were to do research in TESOL, PhD TESOL, you can do research uh, in the areas like mobile language learning, uh, pedagogies related to English language teaching and learning, uh, policies uh, related to English language teaching and learning, uh, systematic functional linguistic, SFL, uh, discourse and genre analysis, uh, English for specific purpose. So feel free to go to the website. You'll see the, the list of lecturers there with the expertise. Uh, if the audience outside there would like to communicate with the lecturers, uh, with the potential supervisor, uh, feel free to email them or you can just email me and I will help to coordinate a meeting between you and the potential supervisor. All right. Okay. Uh, do we have your email ready or should we expose yes, it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
your your email is uh, is it going to okay yeah there it is so uh <laughs> so it should you the audience out uh, to, on facebook and youtube should you have any questions uh, this is the person in charge she is our oh. beloved coordinator for tesla program and she is also one of the supervisors potential supervisors should you have any question uh, that you wish to address okay all right so uh one more question if you may all right, besides doing their courses in master and PhD in TESOL, is there any way where students can learn extra skills uh, in UTMKL? So uh, are there any, like, like, just now you mentioned there are workshops or short courses offered, right? So what are those? Can you elaborate, please? Yeah, uh, like what I mentioned just now, UTM is very uh, famous with all these short courses uh, conducted by the School of Postgraduate studies, or the uh, postgraduate societies, or even by the by the faculty themselves. Okay, so actually, I just talked to uh, one expert of sign language and a sign language expert yesterday. Actually, I, I hope to to bring her to give like a you know like a short course or a short workshop to my my UTM students and also perhaps uh, the audience outside there, mm -hmm. where you can actually learn uh, sign language. You know. Uh, yes. It is good to to to, to learn uh, and to master this because we are in, in we are in uh, we are in a country we have where we have all these uh, uh, people with various abilities, right? So yes. it's good that we can understand them. Uh, so that's, that's my pipeline actually. All right. Okay. So to all of the audience, uh, apply now at admission.utm.my to secure your place for the coming October 2021 intake. Yeah. For more information on TESOL program at FSSHKL, feel free to contact um, our dearest coordinator, Dr. Normi, and her email is shown as uh, just now, norhasfizad.utm.my. All right. So um, uh, to the audience, uh, would you mind filling up the, uh, the attendance? It's supposed to be in the um, in the comment box, I believe. Uh, if it's not, then it will be out after this. Don't worry. This is during the show, and we will contact the winners using the details that you provide in the form. So once you have uh, submitted the form, then we will have the information. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's hear the next experience of Ahmed Chasel students themselves, uh, Azina Ahmad and Wando Amira. Hello. Hello, Madam Kia. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Great. Thank you. <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. Okay. So um, I'm going to ask the question to both of you. Either one can answer first. Feel free to, you know, answer, yeah? Okay, so sure. can you share about your background and why do you choose to do TESOL in FSSHKL? Anyone um, can answer. Yeah, I'll start first. Uh, well, my background, my degree is Bachelor in Education for teaching English for young learners. Basically, mm -hmm. it's TESOL, but focusing on primary level. And uh, I'm an HSLP holder. So for all teachers out there, perhaps you might want to know. So I'm the living proof of HSLP holder in UTMKL, pursuing my master's in TESOL. Mm -hmm. So um, before this, I'm working as an English teacher in one of the primary school in Selangor, and I've been transferred to PPD. So I'm working in PPD, and then I received my HLP after my fourth time applying HLP. So the fourth time is the charm. So yeah, yes. don't yeah. So for all teachers out there, don't feel um. I mean, like um, putus asa. Yeah, discourage. Mm -hmm. Just continue applying, and you may just uh pursue your master in Tassel and do pursue in KL. Great. All right. Uh, what, about, what about Amira? Yes. Hi, everyone. Assalamualaikum. Uh, my name is Amira. I am from uh, Kota Baru, Kelantan. <laughs> uh, actually, um, I just finished my degree. I just completed my Bachelor of Engineering from Sydney last year in June. And then straight away after I got back to Malaysia, I pursued Master of uh, TESOL. Uh, here in UTM. So I'm the living proof that uh, Kazina mentioned living proof just, just now. So I'm the living proof that if you have a different uh, different bachelor from a different field, yes, you can still pursue a master of uh, TESOL here, yes. Okay, all right. So both of you have, um, I would say, very different backgrounds, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So how, how have you got the classes so far? 
uh, are they interesting or what subjects do you like the most? <laughs> <laughs> well, personally, uh, because I, me and Amira, we've been through the first semester together. So um, my favorite subject will be all the subjects that I took in KL, not to be biased and scared because, yeah, because it seems like um, the, the subjects uh, let me explore myself and the lecture is very helpful and they are giving guidance and they're also being like a support system to us. So I'm quite um, feel on it to learn via online platform with them. So all the subjects yeah. in KL, for instance, like SLA, LTM, I mean, all the be at Tessel students would know that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah also mm -hmm. description of English, even though it's tough, but still, yeah. I think it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I will have to agree with uh, Kazina. I think it's because uh, we are part of the UTM Kuala Lumpur community, so we're quite close with one another. We're close with the lecturers, so it's it's understandable that we enjoy the courses in KL more. So, but for me personally, since I come from an engineering background, uh, taking a call computer assisted uh, language learning course uh, to me is by far the most interesting, simply because it's like a marriage between between engineering and education <laughs> it's like a perfect combo because currently we're in uh, we uh, in the pandemic situation right so online learning is something is uh, is the current norm so learning about computer assisted language learning i think is something that all teachers should uh, you know it's a knowledge that we all should acquire at the moment so yeah i, I actually just finished the course few weeks ago and i'm still yeah yeah which is which explains my excitement right now yeah, in explaining yeah. it yeah so for for those who are uh, planning to pursue m at tassel one day i think you enjoy the subject yeah amazing all right okay so um to the audience uh it's now the time for our first quiz the question is okay what does m at tassel stand for you can type it out in the comment uh, section yeah what does Emmet Tassel stand for? So the winner, we will choose the winner as the fastest and the most accurate. Okay, uh, it will be you will be contacted based on the context given in the attendance form. All right. So third question. Okay, you are the first batch of uh, Tassel students in FSSHKL. That means you have been joining the classes online since last year, right? Okay. So yeah. how do you cope with um, online learning so far? Online distance learning, to be specific, right? So how do you cope yeah. with it? Well, um, to be honest, um, this is sort of like first time for everyone. I mean, like starting from the six years old kid up until us. So uh, for me myself, when we have a good, um, I mean, like a good environment. Uh, I mean, like a support uh, from family. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the most important thing. And also from the lecturers, from the classmates, the course mates. Uh, so it, it will give you a positive, a positive way to go through the online learning, which everyone says is like a uh, hectic. Like when you are in a traffic jam, you keep like, you know, feel yeah. that. So when you are doing the online learning, the traffic is like, yeah, the video is lagging. You know, sort of thing. So for me, myself, online learning has a positive and negative part, but it's you yourself. How you how you value that? How you treasure that? So I'm I'm enjoying it, honestly. <laughs> maybe because I'm on my HLP and I'm on my study leave, so I'm just focusing on this. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah. Sorry, Mura. It's okay. Uh, yeah, for me, um, similar to Kazina, I'm currently not working. I'm uh, a full time student, so uh, online learning has its has its perks. But then, uh, I think the most challenging part is always to keep the motivation, to keep the spirits up, because we are currently. I'm sure all of us feel slightly congested, uh, like slightly trapped. You know, being in a house, we can't go out. We can't eat outside things like that so for me i i so orang yang sangat uh, suka bergerak everywhere so yeah be, so it's essential to have like uh, as you mentioned to have a good environment to have a good uh, support system at home so um because because when it comes to online everything uh, i i think if you have a good internet connection you have all the resources i think you'll go get along just fine but then it's is the motivation it's how you want to 
keep striving you know to keep that spirit uh, high up yeah that's that's the most challenging part so my advice is to always um to always um stay positive and then uh always make a list because when when it comes to online learning sometimes you slack off you forget yeah. things here and there yeah so always have a have a board at, in your room and then write things down and then keep yourself uh motivated try to do all the things that you like things you enjoy yeah i think that's what makes my online learning slightly more fun i would say I see all right. Okay. So to the audience, um, I would like to inform you uh, that this is actually uh, going to be uh, our first anniversary for um, one year anniversary for TASO program in Kornopo. All right, so um, to celebrate this, uh, we have a special video prepared uh, by Dr. Domi featuring the MET TASO students. So let's watch it, shall we? one year right almost yeah, almost. yeah. yeah. it feels it feels very nostalgic for some reason <laughs> for some reason <laughs> like, like we already graduated but <laughs> yeah, exactly. okay um so we we have another question uh to mira uh, would you mind me asking you first now yes, yes sure. okay uh you're doing top course and um as lena you're doing mixed mode so why do you choose the mode and how do you cope with them Okay, so for me, initially, it's, it's, it's quite a, <laughs> it's a simple story, actually. I, I know nothing about Ibeta, <laughs> so when I first wanted to pursue, uh, I it, it started off when I, okay, I did engineering and then I decided that, okay, engineering is not for me. Uh, English has always been my passion since I was a child. So um, so I felt like, okay, if this, if this is the time uh, for me to change career, you know this is the moment so with nothing with no information or anything i uh i just uh went to utm page and i saw dr nomi's email so i emailed uh the school and with her as well saying that um okay i wanted to pursue here and there but i have no knowledge on that so is it even possible for me to pursue you know i'm sure it's a burning questions for people like me out there so dr nomi uh she contacted me and then she guided me through and then saying that okay since you felt like you wanted to acquire you know, basic knowledge about TASO since I have no background. Uh, thought course is probably the best choice for me because I wanted to gain as much knowledge, as, as many knowledge as possible. So, um, yeah, it, it, it started from there. So uh, I did not even consider mixed mode or research because uh, at that time I did not see myself uh, doing research yet. It's more on, okay, I want to learn. I just want to learn first and see how mm -hmm. I go from there. Yeah, so so and the way I cope with it, a uh, thought cost is uh quite heavy compared to mixed mode and uh research because we have made more classes, right? But 
like I mentioned, just <laughs> always have a list. And then uh, <laughs> because because we we and then it's all about niat also because we are here to learn. So mm -hmm. keeping that in mind, I think is we can go through anything as long as we have the right intention to be here. So for me, essentially, I want to learn. <laughs> So here mm -hmm. I am as a learner in a thought course program. I see. So no, no, no plan whatsoever beforehand, and then you just say, "Okay, maybe yes. I want to do this." Okay, great. Yes. Very spontaneous. I like it. <laughs> okay. What about Athena? Um, well, as I mentioned earlier, I am an HLP holder. We mm -hmm. whereby is a cuti belajar speno. Uh, I mean, like with um with salary as well i mean like i got the full hlp hmm. so the main um i mean like sharat there you have to take mixed mode or full research hmm. we can't take thought costs uh because previously yeah uh, maybe hlp allow that but currently no more so That's that is why i have I, I choose to take mixed mode instead of full research because i don't have any background in research yet except during my B8 years when doing research action as a subject mm -hmm. there so uh, I've been knowing Dr. Nomi I mean like since five past four or five years back I've been mm -hmm. to UTMKL uh, for one of the open day mm -hmm. uh, during that time I'm not really ready so when I received this I just uh, straight ahead contacted her because I still got save her number in my phone mm -hmm. and uh, to all the audience out there, uh, because I'm a HLP uh, holder, so I have to get an offer letter at this very short time. So only Dr. Nomi will help me to get the offer letter within a few days compared wow. to the university. I have to wait for a month or more because I've contacted them. So the time constraint. So that's why I'm pursuing my master in DMKL because it makes my life more easier. Yeah. <laughs> she was the first to like do it for you. So it's like instead of going to other universities that this is the best, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, you're under HLP and Mira, you're self-funded, yes, I believe. So what's the fee for Emmet Tassel and why do you think, uh, what do you think about it, about paying for the fee, the amount. Is it reasonable or is it not so reasonable? What do you think? <laughs> uh, for me, um, uh, for this semester, I'm taking uh, five courses and mm -hmm. I paid, uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, I paid 3,000 for this uh, for this semester. And I think personally, um, I don't, I feel like it's, it, I feel like it's fine. For me, mm -hmm. but then uh, it, it, it's hard for me to actually compare and contrast because my previous degree is, is actually in Sydney, which is yeah, triple <laughs> more expensive. So for me, 3,000, you know, is, 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 uh, is more than okay for me. And then, uh, but then uh, now we're currently doing online learning, right? So I'm not in, in terms of resources, I'm very much happy with whatever that uh, we received uh, for, um, for the courses that we've taken so far, uh, the lecturers always give us uh, textbooks and you know, online textbooks. And then even if we have to buy, they always recommend you know the best ones, the the, the cheap or cheap or reasonable ones. So mm -hmm. I feel like when it comes to uh, the resources, it's more than enough. And I feel like three thousand is fine for me for for this semester especially because it's only it's only been my second semester. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's been my second yeah. semester. Yep. <laughs> All right. So what about uh, Adelina? Well, as Shelby, I'll be fully funded, so yeah. I'm not really. Yeah, but but I do take a look at, at the financial in, information on the e. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, like the GSMS, right? So the platform that we have to refer to. So yeah, for for me myself, um, for all the audience out there, as teachers or anybody who who wants to join and pursue your master in Tassel in KL, I think you should because of it's affordable and reasonable. Yeah, yeah. It's very, yeah, very affordable. Ah, okay. All right, sorry, it's a bit lagging here because it, because of the rain, it usually it happens, right? <laughs> so I was like waiting for the answer and I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> so sorry, all right. <laughs> Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you are now watching Insights, PhD Master's uh, of Education Tassel, Get Educated to Educate. So feel free to type your questions in the comment box, Amit Tassel. 
uh, under the School of Education that has been in UTM uh, since 1994. All right, since 2020, the program has been offered in uh, KL campus too. Uh, before this, it was only in JB, but now it's in KL campus as well. So for more information on Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities for Lumpur, go to the website as shown below. So there's none, I'm going to read it out. Yes, there it is, https uh, colon slash double slash humanities dot utm dot my slash kl. Okay, so um, without further ado, um, let's uh, watch a short video on UTMKL to, for the audience to see how UTMKL looks like. Okay, what a lovely video we just watched just now. So basically that's how UTMKL looks like. Very cute, uh, but you you know you want to know more about UTMKL now, right? Okay, so next uh, we have Mr. Junaidi or better known as Mr. Hadi. Hello everyone. Uh, hi, Wanathira, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Can you okay, hear so me? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. I can hear you Sorry, very because well. Because I'm using uh, external um, mic here. All right. Ah, okay. All right. So Hadi is currently doing his PhD in Tesla, right? Uh, you're doing That's PhD right. in Tesla. Yeah. Okay. So would you mind sharing a bit about your uh, background and why did you decide to do Tesla in UTMKL? All right. Um, I believe I don't have to introduce my name uh, because you can see uh, my name on the screen, my full name. Hadi Junaidi uh, Kusin. At times, I'm um, I am a student teacher, student lecturer, whatever you call it. Uh, student because um, at times I'm pursuing my PhD at UTM, 
obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am now in my second semester. Uh, mm -hmm. Concurrently, I'm also lecturing at one uh, public university in Tanjung Malim. Uh, why UTM? Oh, let me see. I mean, why not? I mean, you, if you go south, you get to see KLCC, you know, north, yeah. then you get to see uh, what? So go uh, nearby, you get, you get to also shop at Taling Street. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. why not, right? Why not? <laughs> I mean, uh, it, it, began, uh, it, it actually began last year. Uh, wait, was it July, if I'm mistaken? I was actually looking for um, potential supervisors. Mm -hmm. uh, that I emailed um, a few potential supervisors from three universities and my current supervisor who, uh, who is um, Dr. Nordiza Haj Ali responded in just two hours. Wow. So basically it was, yeah. You know, until now I am still actually waiting for the response from one of the uh, potential supervisors <laughs> I emailed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, basically her first response was the reason why I actually enroll in, in uh, UTM. Ah, so almost the same reason as, uh, I think, Azlina just now. She mentioned ah, yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, imagine so, if you talk about contacting supervisors, yeah, sometimes it may, it may take you months, some even years, you know, uh, ah. because I, I, I heard from some of my friends who, uh, who actually wanted to pursue their PhD up mm -hmm. until the very last minute, they did not actually hear anything from the potential supervisor. So in mm -hmm. a way, I was actually lucky. And thanks to uh, Dr. Noliza Haji Ali, uh, who actually responded in just two hours. Yeah, great. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Yeah. Uh, Noliza, I know her very well. She is a very good uh, yes. of mine. <laughs> okay. She is super, uh, super, super effective. Yes. Okay, so... Um, PhD is, is a full research uh, course, right? So do you need to yeah. attend any class? Uh, or how? if you do, then how are the classes like? Okay, yes, uh, I am doing full research mode. Uh, but then uh, in my first semester, I did have to complete some four courses, three related to um, research, and one was on um, leadership. Uh, so basically, uh, the classes uh, were conducted online because, you know, we are in this pandemic time, right? Mm -hmm. um, I would say um, the classes were fun, fun in a sense that um, I had the experience to actually exchange ideas with cosmates from, you can say, uh, across the globe, because I remember having um, cosmates from the USA, from China, from Pakistan, from Nigeria. So basically, the whole experience uh, was uh, exhilarating, I would say, mm. in a way, yeah. Yeah. That's great. Okay, so most people say that PhD is a lonely journey, but what you said is now was a bit contradictory, right? But what do you think yeah. about it? Do you, do you mind sharing it with us? Uh, how, how do you manage your study so far? Well, uh, postgraduate studies can be a lonely journey uh, because I did my master's, um, I mean, I did uh, full research mode as well for my master's. Uh, so back then, I did not actually have to attend uh, classes, yeah? And because of that, I did not have any course mates. So imagine, I, 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 I had to actually endure the whole period of completing my master's alone. There was nobody to, to actually talk about research. There was nobody to actually, um, you know, uh, share your feelings. Because, you know, when you talk about uh, completing your postgraduate, yeah? Uh, when we're all human, right? Yes. We, we we experience ups and downs in life. Uh, same goes to uh, you know your 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 postgraduate journey. Mm. Uh, yeah, but that was back then. Uh, with um, PhD in UTM, I would say I am lucky in a sense because we have very uh, supportive uh, postgraduate community from the students to our coordinator, Dr. Normi, to Dr. Mm. Farah, to my own supervisors. So basically. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a lonely journey, uh, mm -hmm. that, but of course, that, that will all depend on where you actually pursue your PhD. In uh, UTM, you know, uh, you can only feel lonely if you are a true uh, misanthrope or recluse person. Okay, but if you are a person who actually enjoy the company of um, everyone else in your surrounding, I wouldn't say uh, lonely. Okay, in Not fact, you will actually help, yeah, you have this very supportive, encouraging people in your surrounding. Mm -hmm. um, how do I manage my study? Well, um, <laughs> uh, I am actually working full-time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay? And um, 
I have to, on top of teaching, I need to somehow complete some supervision work. I need to publish paper. I need to also make sure I secure research grants because that's basically the requirement working at faculty. Yeah? Uh, I'm still juggling, but yeah, <laughs> I'm still trying to, 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 to find my rhythm. But uh, I would say thanks to the supportive community of UTMKL, well, uh, it is manageable at times, manageable. I'm still breathing, you know, <laughs> normally, <laughs> as yes. you can see. I don't need yeah. the support of oxygen machine and whatsoever. Yeah, basically, uh, yeah, manageable. Okay. All right. Okay, that's that's amazing uh, because you do have the support system. And as you mentioned, you're not a very yes. good person yourself. So you do enjoy the company of others. And that's great. Okay, you see yes. that's great. All right, okay, yes. so to the audience, uh, this is the time for our second quiz. Okay, the question is, to know more about PhD and Emmet Tassel at FSSHKL, you can contact the program coordinator. What is her name? Okay, what is the name of the PhD and Emmet Tassel uh, program coordinator at FSSHKL? Okay, so- I you mentioned her name just now. <laughs> yes, we have some um, mentioned her name several times, but it needs to be the full name, okay? All right, so the fastest and the most accurate will be contacted based uh, on the context given in the Google form. All right, so another question to uh, Hadi. All right, can you uh, share us uh, a bit about your research so far? What's your research about? Well, um, I'm actually doing a research on language policy. Um, I cannot be sharing with you the details as yet. Perhaps uh, when uh, when I start publishing a, an article, perhaps on that, uh, you get to actually learn more about my research. But but basically, in general, it's about uh, language policy. Ah, okay, that is uh, the area of expertise for Dr. Lisa. She she is yeah, a, she yeah. is the the in person and the it person for yes. language in MPL. That's right. All right. Okay, so. Uh, what do you think about uh, your tuition fee? So is it reasonable? Is it manageable so far? Mm, reasonable, let me see. I joined UTM in November 2020. I have paid the fees for two semesters. It cost me 7,000. I can still enjoy my favorite food and I gain weight. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That's it's reasonable. Plan. Yes, okay. It's reasonable. Yes, it is true. Okay, so uh, thank you, Hadi. So to the audience on Facebook and YouTube, you're on Insights. So today we are talking about Emmet Tassel and PhD Tassel. Uh, these programs are under the School of Education, be, uh, besides in Johor Bahru campus. Uh, they're also offered in the KL campus under Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities, UTMKL. So um, without further ado, there is a, here's a short montage about PhD and Emmet Tassel. Passionate to enhance your educational research skills after pursuing your master degree? Wanting to gain more knowledge and add to the body of knowledge? Aiming to pursue a career in the research and teaching field and want to be an expert in the teaching of English as a second language? Join us and enroll in the Doctor of Philosophy in Tassel at the Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities, UTM Kuala Lumpur. We are easily accessible as we are located in the city of Kuala Lumpur. Applications for PhD is open all year round, but it is advisable that you apply for the September or the February intake. That's when our academic semesters begin. These are our areas of research. How long does it take for PhD students to complete their study? Usually, it's between 3 to 6 years. You are not alone when doing your PhD research. Besides attending research methodology classes to help you do your research, you will be supervised by our research supervisors. We offer a competitive fee for both international and local students. Please check the details of the information at www.admission.utm.my. To apply, the requirement is to have a master degree in the field of TESOL. For international students, you need to have the English language proficiency level as the following. What are you waiting for? Come and join us. Be an expert in your field. With a reasonable tuition fee, located in the heart of Kuala Lumpur, we are easily accessible to you. 
apply at admission.utm.my. For further information, please contact our postgraduate coordinator. Passionate to be a future-ready educator and wanting to enhance your teaching quality? Aiming to pursue your career in training field and want to be an expert in teaching of English as a second language? In love with teaching but you don't have any background in education? Come and join us. Enroll in the Master of Education in the Teaching of English as a Second Language at the Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities, UTM Kuala Lumpur. Right in the middle of the city, we are easily accessible. Join us for the September or the February intake. Here, you can do talk course, mixed mode, or full research. For talk course, you will spend most of your time attending classes, doing assignments, and a small-scale research. Mixed mode is slightly similar, but you will spend more time on your research. There will be exams or final exam equivalent projects at the end of every semester for both modes. As for the full research, you will attend fewer classes. Most of your time is dedicated on your thesis, supervised by our lecturers. To apply, these are the entry requirements. A bachelor degree in Kessel or other fields related to English language studies with a CGPA of 3.0 from universities recognized by UTM. What if you don't have any background in education? Yes, you can still join us. You will take some pre-recorded puzzle subjects that will help you to understand this course better. For international students, you will need to have English language proficiency level as the following. Our fee is very reasonable. Please check the details of the information at the website below. Depending on the number of subjects that you register first time, you can complete your studies within one year and a half to three years. Classes are conducted on a weekdays, mostly from 4 to 7 p.m. But we are going to be flexible. Just negotiate with the lecturers. We may change our class to other times if everyone is happy about it. What are you waiting for? Join us. Enhance your English language teaching quality here at the Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities UTM Kuala Lumpur. Reasonable tuition fee located in the heart of Kuala Lumpur. We are flexible and you will enjoy our blended learning. Apply at admission.utm.my. For further information, please contact our postgraduate coordinator. All right. So we are back on Insights PhD and I'm at TESOL uh, Get Educated to Educate program. So we're moving, moving towards the end of the show. So to the audience, don't miss your chance to upgrade your skills in uh, TESOL. Apply now at mission.utm.my to secure for your place for the coming October 2021 intake. All right. So uh, according to Times Higher Education, UTM is now number one in three subjects engineering, technology, and education. So as you can see, Master Tesla and PhD Tesla is in uh, School of Education and Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities. So we are in the top three um, in according to, uh, sorry, Times Higher Education. All right, so without further ado, uh, I would like to invite all of our panels for the Q&A session. To all of the Facebook and YouTube audience, feel free to type your questions in the comment box. Hello. Hi. We have a surprise, uh, surprise. surprise. Hello. 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 Uh, okay. I've been backstage uh, since the start of the show, so uh, <laughs> and I've been answering some questions over on Facebook, and uh, here I am. <laughs> right. So uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, Azlina was in my class, my two classes, right? I uh, for Master of uh, Education Tessel, I teach two subjects, Tia. 
Uh, one is innovations in learning and teaching, and the other one, uh, the one that Azlina loved the most, is <laughs> descriptions of English. <laughs> yeah, my area is in systemic functional linguistics, so we had a great time, yeah, Azlina? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, thank you for having me uh, on this okay. live session. Oh, pleasure. Yeah, so I've got, uh, if I can, Pia, can I answer some of the questions that our viewers post on Facebook, if yes. I can? Yes, yeah, it's from Sharifa Azmawati. She asked whether if uh, those who are still not graduating and still don't get the last semester result, is it okay to apply for the master, although they haven't graduated? Mm. Um, uh, I think there are a few cases like this last year, they are still finishing their uh, degree, I believe. Uh, and they just waited until they finished till the end. And then right after, immediately after they completed their degree, they straight away apply for master. So I would highly encourage for you to just be patient and draft your plan like uh, what Hadi did. Uh, he shops around and finds the <laughs> best place to go, right, Hadi? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I would advise that to you, Sharifa, that you finish your degree and then uh, right when you get the official transcript, apply for the master program. Yeah, and because you need to focus on your final semester of your bachelor degree anyway, I think uh, our panels would agree with that as well. So you, you, you know, you focus one at a time. And then there's also a, a, re, a remark from our colleague in Johor Bahru, Dr. Noor Ain Balkis. She's the coordinator for another master's program under our faculty, MLCDC. Yes, she said, if you're planning to further your studies until PhD, it is highly recommended for you to pursue your master's degree in full research. This will prepare you for your PhD. And I concur with her advice. Uh, why? Because uh, if you have you know the basic foundation of how a research should be conducted which you will gain if you enroll in a full uh full research mode what uh, it will help you later in your phd is that whatever that you have in your uh, master full research you just expand it uh, further into your phd uh, that would mean you don't have to recall all a different set of theories or different sets of uh, concepts or areas because um, I think Hadi is also pursuing his area of interest, right, into uh, language policy and planning. Uh, as for me, uh, from my degree years, I, I've always been interested in uh, written discourse. So all the way through for my master's and PhD, my area is written discourse. So. Uh, it helps you to expand not only your knowledge, but it makes it easier. Uh, Heidi said it's a lonely journey, right? <laughs> uh, where One where you gain weight and all, uh, including the supervisor like me, <laughs> right? So uh, <laughs> it's not just, a, you know, it's a world problem staying at home. You gain weight. Uh, but uh, apart from that, you also explore the colors of life, the, the struggles and the pressure but uh, it's uh, very important for every student to stay uh, mentally uh, in a, men a good mental state because you're alone. Uh, and uh, those are some of the responses that probably I, I would like to address from our Facebook viewers. Thank you for watching. Back to you, Tia. All right. Thank you, Dr. Farah. Okay. So it's time for our final quiz question, yeah? So the question is, what is the website for Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities, UTN Kuala Lumpur? Okay, how can you get the info on all of the, uh, here you can get the information on all the lectures and courses offered. So what is the website of Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities, UTN Kuala Lumpur? Please type it out in the comment section. Okay. Uh, all right, so, um, the last part of the, the session. Okay, we are moving towards the end already. So, um, can we have your final remarks on the program? So, why must our audience join FSHKL to pursue the PhD and Emmet Tassel? Anyone? Would, would, 
should we share? Uh, should we start with Hadi first, and then Azina, and then Amira? Well, uh, ETM itself is a research university, I believe. Yeah. So, if you are someone who would like to venture into doing extensive research in the future, I believe this is the place where you want to, where you can actually learn all the tricks, tips, and strategies when it comes to research. In fact, um, uh, these days, uh, if you talk about um, building a career at university level, for instance, uh, you will need to be very, you need to be well versed in research. Yeah. So yeah, this will be uh, the right platform for you to actually become better practitioner where research is concerned. All right, so what about uh, Athena? Well, um, overall, I think everyone should join UTMKL due to the support system. I believe that that's the most important thing during this, this time because we are so close with our lecturer. So we are so close with our classmates. So we have people around us going to inform you uh, the due is here when and then we're just going to keep contacted to each other and if you have anything in your heart in your mind you just can share with the lectures because they are very helpful trust me it won't be a like we said a lonely journey it will be like a together journey yeah, yeah. yeah. okay uh yes uh for me um uh, uh, uh for for those who are like me who are from a different field and you feel like uh you know i i love english i want to be an english teacher i want to be an educator you know if you if you have these thoughts in your mind but you don't know where to start i feel like um utmkl mm -hmm. is the is the best place for you to 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 uh pursue mat so because um for me, I, I I've enjoyed my two semesters so far because, uh, like Azina mentioned, uh, the the community here is very nice. Uh, for me, essentially, I'm like fish out of water. You know, I'm I'm so lost at the beginning. I I have nobody. I have no knowledge. But then uh, I've been surviving really well. And then um, the community here is very nice. I think because there are not many of us, but we are happy to expand the family. So please, please uh, join us. And I feel like. Uh, compared to my previous experience, you know, studying, I, um, coming to UTMKL is by far my best decision ever. So no, no exaggerating here. No, no uh, sugar coating anything. This is true fact from me. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you uh, to all of the um, panels. All right. So we have a question, I believe, from um, the audience. What might the question be? Okay, uh, th there's a question from uh, Ms. Sharifa Azmawati to Dr. Farah. So one more question. If the result uh, come out on this October, is it possible to apply for the master's program? This okay, uh, right. That's a good question because uh, in over in UTM, we have two uh, semesters, right? Uh, the February semester as well as the September, October. Now that the timeline is changing, almost yeah. every other our cha uh, our timeline changes uh, aligned with the pkpd announcement right nowadays <laughs> so uh, probably the next uh, uh, semester will start sometime in october so i if possible uh, sharifa if you can get an unofficial uh, transcript uh, to accompany your uh, registration form that would be great Sharifa uh, try to do that if you really want to start this coming semester and we do have an open day where uh, it's possible for new students to get uh, an uh, you know an exempted fee of 500 ringgit that's quite a lot 500 Hadi we can go to Canadian <laughs> to get Chinese cuisine at Lai oh. <laughs> I'm missing that. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, by the way, uh, probably not many know this. Uh, when I did my master test, I'm also an alumni of master test, but over in Johor Bahru because it was not offered in KL. It's now more convenient to you. It's uh, nearer for those who are who are who are at the central area. I've got my friends last time when I did my master uh, TESOL program who commuted all the way from Seremban to Skudai. 
just to attend wow. classes. So grab the opportunity. Uh, highly likely that next semester is still going to be online. So finish off all the uh, courses yes. that um, as many as you can take. I'm not saying you have to do all, yeah? <laughs> yeah, as many <laughs> as you can take. And then just go for it. Uh, for all you know, you are ending your uh, you know, master journey and on to your PhD journey. And uh, we have our boss here. Yeah, our boss. <laughs> Dula Muhammad yeah. Nawi is the assistant dean at our faculty. What is the difference between UTMKL and UTMJB program? It's the, the same, right? <laughs> it's a mirror image of what we are offering in JB, what we offer in JB, we also offer in Kuala Lumpur. So we are catering more uh, people now not just from one campus but two campuses yeah mm -hmm. so we are trying to get as many family members as possible and uh like what amira said we work as a team i'm the coordinator for language academy program uh, for postgraduate uh, program but i work very closely with other coordinators just to ensure the smooth running of our postgraduate studies as well as others and I, we try our best to, you know, um, settle all the queries, all the uh, questions that uh, our students uh, are having or the issues that they face. So uh, we are here for you. Yeah. And come yes. on over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so I would like to now announce the winners for our quiz. Okay. All right, so the question one quiz, uh, what does Emmet Tessel stand for? The winner is, give it a drum roll, uh, Hagi Palani. Hagi Palani. Well done, Hagi Palani. Okay, uh, for question two, uh, to know more about PhD and Emmet Tessel at SSHKL, you can contact the program coordinator, what is her name? So I think our most uh, active. Uh, yes audience yes. uh, uh, yeah. became the winner so miss sharifa azmawati congratulations okay and question three what is the website of faculty of social sciences and humanities in utm Kuala Lumpur? the winner is nurul hasmi congratulations, congratulations. <laughs> so now sharifa has to come over to kl now that she has <laughs> asked so many questions right? <laughs> come on over we will answer all the questions <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Okay, so uh, that marks the end of the show. Thank you so much to Dr. Normie. Where are you, Dr. Normie? Come join us, Dr. Normie. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Normi, um, Hadi, Azina, Mira, and of course, Dr. Farah, I was surprised. <laughs> surprised. <panel. laughs> Thank uh, you for having us. us. Thank yes, you so much. You. Uh, special thanks goes to our dear audience who also uh, who are actively staying until the end of the show. And don't miss your chance for the next October 2021 intake. Yeah. So go to admission.utm.my to secure for your MET TESOL or PhD TESOL place. So till then, see you in the next insight. Assalamualaikum, everyone. Bye. 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 Stay safe. <laughs>